Hello, welcome to Edge CGI. My name is Jason Alt. This is part two of a five part tutorial series. All right, so we've got all of these parts. Um, now we need the bands that go around here. We don't have those yet. So if we look back at our reference, we have these bands that go up and around. So we'll do that part next. So I'm just going to do the same selection, hold shift and select the next one and deselect the bottom here. And so to create the band, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to scale this in one direction. So I'm only scaling in the X direction here. And I get this prompt that comes up that says, do I want this to be an individual object or an element? I'm going to say element, which means, you know, what we talked about before. Um, and actually, I'm going to end up changing. Um, no, we'll redo. That's fine. Um, what, I'm, what I was going to say was, uh, I want these parts to be kind of separate from those parts. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select... Oops. I'm going to select the bottom parts of the bands, and I'm going to extrude them. But instead of extrude, this time we're going to use bevel, just so you can get used to some other tools. So I'm going to bevel and change the height. So bevel not only allows me to extrude out, but it also lets me to scale at the same time. So I don't want to go too far down here, and don't want to go too far out. Okay, that's good. And I'm going to go into element mode. And uh, I'm going to use this window crossing. Um, I'm going to change this so that my selection only will select what's 100% within my window selection. So if I hold Alt and I select, it deselects the bottom of this. Same idea on this side. So even though my selection was up here, it doesn't select that one polygon because it's not within it. And I'm going to use the same bevel settings on that. So bevel. And I'm going to change this this time. Since these are all kind of going out in different directions to local normal, which will allow them to go out in the direction they're already facing. Group does it all in one direction. So we'll leave that. All right, so that gives me those bands. So now I can just move this out. Oh, sorry. Got to make sure you turn off edge constraint. So we'll set that back to none. And I'm going to move this over to the side here. And I'm just leaving a little bit of space here. So this is actually a separate element. If we look at this, what it actually looks like, notice how there are no polygons in the back of this. That's actually good if we're trying to optimize polygons, especially if we're working in um, a uh, game design, you know, creation process for 3D assets. Uh, we want to optimize by not having polygons where we're never going to see them. So I'm going to use this same one, but I'm going to do another section here. I need to create the, if we look at the reference, these little, uh, I guess, rivets. I don't, I don't know what we'd really call them, but we have to create that, uh, those as well. So I'm going to use a uh, little tool under cylinder and I'm going to turn on auto grid. Now auto grid, normally when we create something, it creates it along the grid. This allows us to use our geometry as the grid. So as these go up over, it actually changes the direction of them. So I'm going to set my sides here to eight. And this is going to create them as individual objects. So I'm going to just make one and I'll extrude it out a little bit. Okay, and so now I can take this one, convert to editable poly, and I'm going to go to isolate, which allows me to hide everything except for what's selected, just so I can see the back of this easy. I'm going to delete that. I'm also going to delete the one on the front, because that one was more than a four-sided polygon. I'm going to turn this window crossing thing back off. I'm going to hold shift and scale this down in all directions. And then another tool that I use, and you have to make sure this keyboard shortcut override toggle is turned off. Yours might look like this. And what this allows us to do is, if I hold Control, Alt, and press C, it collapses all these together. And if I go to Edge Mode, and I select 
these edges that make these into triangles, I can hold control and click backspace to remove those edges. Now I'm just going to turn this back on. And that gives me my little rivet, which is nice. So I'm going to hold shift and drag that up. And I'll just make that a copy. And do the next one. So the next one here is going to be at a bit of an angle. So I'll just hold shift, move that up into place. I'm going to hit uh, Z, which will zoom my camera into whatever is selected. I'm going to rotate this to where it looks like it kind of lines up. And then finish out the rest of these. So I'm holding shift and moving. And that's what is allowing me to copy these. In case, in case you're not aware of what I'm doing. Whoa. And the last one here. Yeah, so when I shift and move or shift and rotate, uh, it ends up creating a duplicate of any given object. And let's make sure that's level there. I'll just move that down in. All right, great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach all of these together. So attach. And I'm going to go to my pivot point here. And I'm going to say use origin, which is basically what that means. So it goes to the very center here where this black uh, grid line is. And I'm going to go to my modifiers here. I'm going to drop this down and go to symmetry. There we are. And actually, you know what? We have to do something before we do that. So I need, and I, was, I started doing it, and then I realized, oh, I'll just use the origin thing. Um, so I'm going to hierarchy, effect pivot point only. I'm going to say uh, center to object, align to world, and then I'm going to move it to zero, zero, zero. Okay, so that moves my pivots there. Okay, so now I'm going to be able to do symmetry properly. The pivot point has to, unfortunately, be in the right place to do this. So symmetry. And I want it to be symmetrical. Come on, work with me here. Okay. So that's going to give me the other side here. So I'm going to convert this to an editable poly. I'm going to go over to this hammer, which is the utilities panel. And I'm going to do what's called a reset transform or a reset X form. I'm going to say reset selected, right click, convert back to editable poly. So let me explain what I just did. I reset the transform there because I created this object in not um, the perspective or top view. And when I create objects that way, um, their orientation can be off. So that was part of the issue I'm having with the symmetry tool. So if I use symmetry now, I can easily see that I want the symmetry to be in the Y direction. And now it flips over where I need it to be. So that's an easy way for me to create objects once, mirror it one way, mirror it the other way. And then I'm just going to convert those to edit poly. I'll go back to my treasure chest, select element. It's already selected there. So I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to move this over to the other side and center it up with these. There we go. All right, the last part we have on this is to create the lock. So the lock is going to be created pretty simply. Um, so the way I'm going to do this is kind of how we had started before. I'm going to grab these polygons. I'm going to hold Shift, and I'm going to scale these down. And then it creates a new element from those. I'm going to go to the edge tool. I'm going to select the edge. You may have to click a couple times before it selects this edge for this element. Um, I'm going to turn on constrain. I'm going to move this 
down here, about halfway. And I'm going to extrude this out. And I don't want it to be by polygon anymore, so I'm going to set that back to group. And I'm going to hit the check mark here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down. Oh, got to make sure to turn off edge constraint. I'm going to hit L to go on my left view. I'm going to move this down so my lock is coming about straight out here. Yeah. Let's move the vertex here so that this is a little more flat than it was before. And then I'm going to take the polygon that's on top here and scale it down in the X direction to round this out. So now this becomes more round. And we can go in and add in more polygons if we want to, if we want to really round this out more by using the Swift Loop tool. So you can see here how that kind of works. So I'm going to set an edge there. Now when I go to edge mode, it will automatically select that one. I'll scale this out a little bit. So that makes this a little bit more nice to look at. And if I want to round out the top a little bit more, I can Swift Loop it and scale it out. Maybe scale this down a little bit more. Okay, now when we look at this, I deselect here. I'm going to hit F4 to turn off my wireframe. Notice how my edges here, I can kind of see these very sharp edges on all this. If I want this to look more round, I can use what's called smoothing groups. So I can select all these edges and all the ones on this side. And down here under polygon smoothing groups, I can set them to a particular smoothing group. Um, now, ideally, your main object is going to be one, so I'm going to use two for the other ones. So these ones, I'll set the one. And then the one on the bottom, I'll also set the one. So what that does is, oh, not one, I'll set it to uh, three. What that does is it does all the smooth shading here, and it puts each one in a group, so it tells this to try to look smooth, is basically what it's doing. So it allows me to group these objects by that. Okay, the last part here, I'm going to use the inset tool. So extrude allowed me to extrude out. Bevel allows me to uh, extrude and kind of scale in. And inset does just the scale in part. But it does it in all directions, so it works really nicely. And this is just going to allow me to create my keyhole. So I did the inset in there. I'm going to scale these in and scale these in too. And you know what? I'm going to select these. I'm going to go to use pivot point center and scale these flat just so they come out a little bit more key shaped. Okay. So with those selected, I can just extrude. And now I'm going to extrude inward. So that's where my key will go. And then the final part is doing a very similar sort of thing here on the bottom. So I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to scale this polygon in as an element. I'm going to grab that edge and move it up. And then I'll extrude this out. And actually, I'm going to move this down just ever so slightly. So that way, when I extrude this outward, it gives me a little gap here, which will help me kind of create a seam. And that's pretty good. All right. And then the final part of this would be, um, if you notice mine that I showed, it's a little bit more distorted which gives it that more kind of cartoony stylized look. So I can easily do that with the help of modifiers. So I go to modify, go to taper, and I can 
taper this. And the fun part about taper is it also allows you to uh, set a curve in here. So if I want to do like curve it outward or curve it inward, I could easily do that. Um, I'm going to just leave it just as uh, tapered. Another tool that I could have used is the FFD modifier. And the one I like uh, to use for this is 3x3x3. Three by three by three. Uh, before I use these, if you notice, these uh, parts here, the little riveted parts, weren't moving with it. So I need to attach those. So I'm just going to go to Attach and click Attach. That way, whenever I do this, so uh, let's say I use the FFD 3x3x3, three by three by three, it creates this lattice. And if I twirl this down and go to Control Points, I can select these control points at the top. And I can scale these in. And I can select the ones in the middle here. And also scale them in. And maybe select the ones at the bottom and scale them out. And I'll do the same thing this direction. What's nice about this is you know, right now my box looks a little bit, or my treasure chest looks a little tall, so I could also take this and you know, start changing parts of it in case I've gone a little bit too far um, with this. Let me select the outer corners here. Scale them out a little bit, which will also push in the middle part here. So if I have any like parts on the side here, and kind of pull that in. And that really allows me to make this, you know, treasure chest a little more stylized. Okay. Uh, I believe that's everything. Let's take one last look here. Yep, looks to be all the parts that we had. So, that concludes this part of the tutorial. Please stay tuned for the rest of the series. Thanks for watching Edge CGI and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share if you've enjoyed this tutorial. And thanks for watching.